Good morning everybody. I've got my glasses on so it doesn't look like I'm squinting. Um, it's really sunny out there again today. It's probably going to be, you're not going to see much, but you can see the skies are blue and it's, it's Wednesday, no it's Thursday. It's Thursday the 21st of April and today I'm going to do a video. I was looking at these, um, you know, famous graves videos and um, obviously I've done the June Whitfield one um, I've been looking for another one to do but one that not loads of other people have done that you know one that hasn't been rinsed like your George Michaels and your Highgate cemeteries they're ones that I would like to do at some stage um, but I found one that's in my local cemetery and it seems to be a bit of a big story on this one um, it was a big scandal in the 1800s apparently um, so I've got my laptop here I'm going to read it from the laptop because there's no way I'm going to be remembering all this and I got it from an article and it, it the, the title of the article is Parnell and Kitty O'Shea a Sussex love story she was known as Kate to her family and as Kitty to history a name she would have hated as it was slang for a woman of loose morals. So she wouldn't have liked that. By her grave was a plaque with the words of her husband and lover, Charles Stuart Parnell. Now, I've never ever heard of these people, but you're gonna hear something in a bit that is gonna make you realize that they were actually a big deal. Um, I will give my life to Ireland, but to you I give my love. Parnell was a leader of the Irish Home Rule Movement who campaigned for Irish independence. Uh, he was the Alex Salmond of his day, a man with the ability to inspire his followers and a burning belief in independence for his people from British rule. So, she was the dutiful, if, it's, if estranged wife of an Irish MP called William O'Shea. Although they were a married couple in name only, she dutifully hosted dinner parties to help her husband's career. Um, Parnell was always invited, always accepted, but never showed up, and so she went to confront him in Westminster one fateful day in 1880. Shows, shows how long ago all this happened. The effect was immediate and within months the two had begun a relationship and were living as man and wife in her home in Elton. She bore him three children while still married to O'Shea. In the 1800s I would think that was, it was a pretty dodgy thing to do. Uh, and possibly a further stillborn son after their brief marriage in 1891. So they did get married eventually. Parnell's health was broken by this time as he campaigned to win back the support he had lost as a result of the scandal um, that arose from the revelation of his affair with the wife of a colleague and fellow MP. So these were big wigs we're talking about. These weren't sort of nobodies, you know. I say I've never heard of these people in my life, so um, I was quite excited when I came across this and realised it was it was in my local. Um, cemetery. Um, he spoke at an open air rally in Galway but caught a chill and died soon afterwards in Catherine's arms. The hope for a peaceful transition to Irish home rule was destroyed by Parnell's fall from grace. A quarter of a century later the Irish rebels rose up in rebellion on Easter Monday. Well, that's a bit appropriate isn't it? We've just had Easter. Um, on Easter Monday, so three days ago, I didn't even know this, I'd literally copied and pasted this from an article last night. So I didn't know this, but a quarter of a century later, Irish rebels rose up in rebellion on Easter Monday in 1916. Wow. So 106 years ago and three days. Uh, seized the city of Dublin and were ex executed by British troops when their ill-fated rebellion was defeated. Who knows whether this would ha have happened if Parnell and Catherine had not met and fallen in love. 
So, you know, so it was a bit, this was a big, big, big scandal. Um, and obviously caused a lot of problems. Uh, by the time the couple were married, they had moved to Sussex and set up home in Hove. Hove, if you don't know, is just near Brighton. Um, probably about 20, 20, 25 minutes from me. So they lived there for, for a, a while. Uh, Catherine lived quietly in Little Hampton in her later years. So this brings us back to where we are now, to where I am. And uh, so why I found this story so interesting. Catherine lived in a quiet, in, uh, quietly in Little Hampton in her late years and was buried in the cemetery after her death in 1921 at the age of 75. Whereas a crowd approaching half a million came to line the streets of Dublin when Parnell was buried in uh, Glasnevin Cemetery, only half a dozen of her family were there to see Catherine laid to rest. So that's a bit of a difference, isn't it? Like he's, he's had uh, nearly half a million people at his funeral and she's had half a dozen. Uh, she had been in the limelight quite enough by then. These two famous lovers, and this is the bit that really got to me, because obviously films and actors and all that malarkey. These two famous lovers were, portray were portrayed by Clark Gable and and uh, I think that says Myrna Loy uh, in an ill-fated Hollywood film called Parnell which was released in 1937. Clark Gable, Clark Gable was a big deal. Um, the film was not a happy experience for Gable and flopped at the box office. Gable said he did not want to do any more costume dramas and told the studios to find him more contemporary roles. A year later, he was offered the part of Rhett Butler in Gone With The Wind and he changed his mind, winning an Oscar as a result. That's the story of these couple, this couple. There was, there was a big deal, and they even made a film about it. Um, and that's what got me interested in it. I say, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen the film. It'd be interesting to see the film, to see the people that it was about. But, um, yeah, I found that quite an interesting story when it came up, and it was local to me. Um, it's not one that I think anybody's done. So, you know, I, I know people, a lot of people have gone to see the grave um, of Catherine. So, yeah, I, I've read a few bits where it says like people go down there and ask, and obviously the people at work, they say that is the most asked um, grave to go, for people to go and see. I think I know where it is. I'm sure I've walked past it loads of times, you can't really miss it. It's a huge cross um, ornament, headstone. It's not such, such a headstone, more as a memorial, a um, big memorial. So that's what we are going to go and see if we can find today. The weather's beautiful again as it was when we went to June Whitfield's grave. Um, I'm going to go back to June's as well this week and put some more flowers down because it was really emotional that one and I just think it's sad that someone, you know, and it happens with a lot of people. I was watching one uh, that Paul Unusual Things did on Barry Gibb. I think it was Barry Gibb. One of the Gibb uh, brothers from the Bee Gees. And he's literally buried opposite the, the house that he used to own. Massive house. Um, and like, it's just full of flowers, or, you know, Every, all week, every week, people go down and put flowers. And the thing with June is she was a massive actress. She was, she was, say she did the carry on, she did Bless This House, she did Terry and June, she did Ad, Ad Fab. You know, she was a fantastic actress and it was just sad to go down there and see one little bunch of flowers. So I left her some flowers last week and I think I'm gonna start taking some down weekly because I just, feel that it's something that I need to do, I want to do. And 
I just feel that today is the right day to go and pay our respects to to someone else. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to finish this bit up here. Obviously, I couldn't do anything without the laptop. I, I, I was going to get the pages printed out, and I just thought it was going to be it's going to be awkward for me. I know Paul does it, and I know Paul does it because I've seen his pages blow away before. So I just thought he had a good memory. Um, so yeah, so we're going to do this today. We're going to go and see if we can find her, and uh, yeah, pay our respects. So I'll speak to you all in a bit. Right, everybody. So we are here um, at Littlehampton Cemetery. Um, I said, "Looks." I mean, I thought it was that big cross down there, but I don't think it's that big. But look at these beautiful blossom trees, and I mean. All the roads up there are blocked off and all this, this used to be big bushes around here. They've got cleared all this out and put the edge stones around and all that. It just looks really nice. Um, and they're actually doing some more work behind me. I think that's a new building they've put up there. Look at these trees, how beautiful is that? So we're going to have a little walk now and see if we can find it. Um, I sort of know what it looks like, but it looks like there's a lot of cross ones that sort of look the same. There's two right next to me there, and they definitely aren't the one. Because um, I think the cross is more rough. It's not smooth like those two. Um, so I'll have a look, and then I'll come back to you. It's a beautiful day. Um, I was trying to see if I could see where see anything in the background that would make me know where it is but I can't see anything and like I say there's a load of these big cross ones I don't think it's either of those either and I know this cemetery pretty well my mother-in-law um, is buried here so we do come up to this one um, actually it uh, looks like it could be something over there Okay, I'm going to walk round, I'm not going to walk across actually. There was a path there. But you can see how big this place is. So I think that's a new building there, or oh, they're doing the roof on it. I don't actually remember seeing that before, but it must have been there, actually. I don't spend a lot of time here, we only come up here to see one person, like I say, but it is a beautiful place. Um, so I'm going to keep looking, come back to you. All these edging stones must have been here before, but they've got names on them. Um, they must have been here before, but there was big bushes all round, so you couldn't really see them. They've done the gardens nice. I think I see something that looks like it. It might be it there. So the main road's just there. And this looks like what I've seen. This one here. Parnell. There you go, that's the one. To the beloved memory of Catherine, widow of Charles Stuart Parnell, born 30th of Jan 1846, died 5th of February 1921. And then we've got Nora Marie O'Shea. So I don't know who that is. Um, it says, I will give my life to Ireland, but to you I give my love. C.S. Parnell, 1846. To commemorate the visit of the Parnell Society, April the 23rd, 2003. So these people were a big deal. That's quite a big plot. 
That is quite a big plot there. Now what I did do, or what I didn't do should I say, is I forgot the flowers in the car. So I haven't brought them out of the car, so I'm going to go and get them. I'm going to bring them back and lay them. Lay them down. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a lovely place. You know, very peaceful. Alright, so it's been to get the flowers out of the car. Just got to take the string off the bottom. I want something eating it and choking on it, so this time we bought some chrysanthemums. I think that's how you say it. For Kate, we bought, I think we took roses to June. So yeah, they smell lovely. I think they're really pretty. There's no flowers on the grave at all. As with a lot of these, just, I suppose a lot of them haven't even got any family left probably been a year so I'm gonna go and lay these down but say so, just remember you know these were these were very well to do very well known people and I think it's down this one and uh, yeah they even made a film about say so, Clark Gable played the husband so yeah um, so it's just amazing, you know, big people at the time, very well known, uh, loved in society, well, by some. Um, I've lost my way where I am now. I think it's, oh, it's that's right in front of me. It's all right. So, I'm back. And look, there's just nothing, it's not tended, it's sad really. Beloved memory of Catherine. Like I say, I think Charles is buried in Ireland. He had a big uh, big funeral. And Kate, Catherine, she just had half a dozen people at hers. So Nora Marie O'Shea, I don't know who that is. But we're gonna just take this string off these flowers and lay them down there like that. paid our respects and now we leave Catherine in peace just in the middle of hundreds of others, thousands of others um, I don't know if she's got any family left now or, or anything else about her really but that's the second one that I've done and I uh, hope you enjoyed it See you all again soon. Bye. Knight's Life. Subscribe to it. He's a lovely lad. They're a lovely family. It's a lovely life. And he's a lovely man. Subscribe to him.